Last Centurion TV. We're coming to you live from our studio here on John Foster and to kick off the show this week we're going to play you an interview that we did recently with Bradley Cunningham. Now Bradley is a musician and also an inspirational speaker. We spoke to him about the differences between inspiration and motivation and how his music ties into everything that he does. I'm going to ask that we roll that clip. Enjoy the interview. Hello, hi everyone. I am Kukrana Siloane, aka Clapback Studies, and you are tuned into We Are Centurion TV, where we are all about educating, inspiring, and informing the people of Centurion about what is happening. Now, in today's episode, we are going to be hearing from Mr. Brad over here about this amazing venue called Absolute Soul, the music that he does for a living, as well as the inspirational speaking. Also, finding out what's the difference between motivation speaking and inspirational speaking. Now if you are all interested in that, stay tuned right up until the end as he has an amazing music item that he's going to be playing. Now Mr. Brad, can you please tell us about your inspirational speaking? Tell us about the journey, tell us about how it started and where you are right now. Absolutely, KT. It started as far back as I can remember, even before I got into, got into music. Uh, it was just an, I was, this was something that I wasn't even conscious of. Um, it just naturally, just naturally led its way. And I think it's pretty much the universe's way of trying to show me the direction instead of me trying to drive a direction. Sometimes you've just got to allow things. So what would happen was, is I w random strangers would just approach me. And they would see something in me that they could trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would happen that there'd be people I've just met. And they would just open up their laundry basket and take out the dirty laundry and say, there it is. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, we've just met. You know, you don't hardly know me. But they, they just wanted someone to talk to. And for me, it was like just the, the, the empath in me would, 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 just, would just come out. And I would then give them the counsel. I'd always seek deep, deeper truths. And I'd find out um, what, and, and uh, I've been blessed with a little bit of intuition, um, which sometimes serves me perfectly and other times lead, leads me up, uh, up a creek without a paddle. But I would then give, give the counsel that, that, that I could, and just to see them walk away with a lighter step and a happier heart and with less baggage. It's a privilege, man. Yeah. Um, I get the same kick of having an, a captive audience as just seeing a positive a positive influence on, on, somebody, on somebody else. Mm. And uh, as time went on, I didn't even, I just thought this was a normal part of life. And I mean, and I carried on with the music and then got the, the music bug and then went straight into being cunning Brad and uh, not realizing I was casual coaching the whole time uh, in between. So, uh, so it was only a little bit later on in life when I started to think now, all my original music that I write is not commercial. Mm. It's very deep. And it has, um, and it's very much your, your old school kind of writing, which doesn't have the commercial selling factor, which today's industry, I think, music industry is built more on, on making money instead of making music. And I make music. So I was thinking now, if I'm not, if a commercial hit is not too likely, I'm not ruling it out as, as, a, as, a, as an opportunity, but if it's not all that likely, then what is my purpose here? What, what is it that I'm doing? Yeah. And uh, it was only when I actually started to read my original lyrics of my original songs, they were all about instruction. They were all about inspiration. They were all about guidance, counseling, consulting. Uh, and it was like, then it kind of hit, hit me like a sledgehammer. It's like it's been whispering to me all this time. So within about, was it about eight years ago or so? It was then suddenly, boom, um, coaching, yeah. consulting. Up, inspire, uplift, enlighten, empower, and uh, and those are pretty much some 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 up what I do there. And what's kind of cool is because that is a big passion of mine. I also found a way to um, combine my two passions of uh, music and and inspiration, which yeah. we can talk about maybe when we talk about the music. Yes. But yes. that's pretty much the path that got me onto the inspiration. 
Yes, that is amazing. I can hear the passion in you as you speak. <laughs> is that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Can you also tell the viewers that perhaps don't even know like that there's a difference between motivational speaking and inspirational speaking? Can you? Yes. Let's that? let's let's even chunk it down less than that. Let's actually just look at the word inspiration and let's look at the word motivation. A lot of people mistake the two, and and there's a subtle difference between them. Mm. Whereas now inspiration is is intrinsic in because it's inside of you mm. and uh, motivation is extrinsic it lies outside of yourself so a lot of the times with motivation is looking at something outside of yourself to encourage you to get a job done yeah. now that can work really well in the short term as in um as in people like for a person that is not not doing a job that inspires them is then being motivated by their salary. Yeah. And what happens is that in, in, in when they've done studies, when they look at businesses that have hired people and have given them cash incentives, what happens is production increases in, in a sh very short term. It starts off linear, so let's just say this is where it was. It increases short term, b balances off tapers, and then actually goes down to below where it was where it started out. That's inspiration. They reckon that money is the worst motivator ever, or the worst in inspirer. So we've got to look at this thing now. What is so motivation is like is often a a way of leveraging somebody to do something that they wouldn't initially want to do. So it's trying to trying to 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 get them keen to do so. I wouldn't say coerce or to manipulate. Those are quite rough words, but I think you feel what I'm trying to get at you. So that is up the outside of yourself, that external reward that you consume and then it's over. Now what? Whereas I believe that the crux of inspiration is really getting deep inside that person, which is KT. Yeah. What lights you up, man? What is the stuff that you'd be doing if you had nothing on your plate? What is the stuff that you normally end up doing in your spare time when you've got nothing else to do? What is the stuff that you gravitate to? What, what is, and then start to look at the, uh, start, start drawing, uh, joining the dots. What is it? Like I did when I looked at my music and I looked at my lyrics, join up all those dots, how to, and then I got to, to, to what is um, my, my a deep firing passion. Yeah. It, that is within me. So for me, it is finding out what lights you up and what is your, your and that's not easy because a lot of us have been conditioned growing up to say, um, um, children should be seen and not heard. Do it, do it this way or you'll get a hiding. Now that, that's, that's, um, that's motivation right there. Motivation is all about either you get a reward at the end of it or you get, or you get punished. It's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> whereas, whereas inspiration is, when there's no reward or punishment, you're going to do it anyway. Mm. So a lot of the times, it's, it's, we often have been conditioned to do what others expect of us, which is on their, on, on their priorities and their values and on their inspiration list. And they just project it onto you. And uh, I, I think the big duty is to look at what it is that is you. And that's not so easy. You then... But uh, for what I'm doing in my inspiration, I mean, I've got, I've got, a, I've got my Success Loops Academy, which is, and I've got the various, um, various um, branches of it, which is either personal coaching or there's even a membership where there's, I've got four tiers, yeah. where the first tier I make absolutely free. Mm -hmm. And that first tier is pretty much dedicated to seeing, to getting you back to your authentic self. Yeah. Rediscovering who was KT at his core, and uh, what is your passions? Because I mean, eight years ago, I found out. Found out. I mean, yes, music has been a passion, and I found that like thirty years ago. But to be able to combine these two passions and have a purpose, a fulfilling purpose out of it, that's success. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, for me to take so long, it's much easier to make it shorter for other people to yeah. really get to the core of it is to get to know your authentic self, really, because you were created. I believe that everyone being individual and being, and being geez, you must shut, shut me up when, when, when you want to ask a question, because when I get going with this, then I just flow, man. I, I'm so passionate about this. So it is about find, finding that, which I do believe that every, everyone was created different for a reason. Yeah. I believe that there is a super conscious, uh, super con we were super consciously conspired for a reason. That's what makes you different to me. Mm -hmm. So what is that little essence that makes you different? And how can you leverage it 
to get the most fulfillment out of your life. And when you do that, guaranteed success is going to follow, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, don't worry. If you keep going on, this is what people want to know. They want to know what is this inspiration that you speak of. And I love that you are passionate about it because many people don't know that it's it's something that must come from within, as you had said. Now, can you then tell us when the music started and how it was incorporated in your life? Yes, the music uh, started... uh, My mom was very musical. Uh, She could play piano accordion. You don't know if, if you don't, don't know what a piano accordion is. It's one of these beasts of an instrument where it's got the the the, the key, keyboard keys, uh, like a piano piano notes on the one side. It's got buttons on the other side which play the chords, and it's a wind instrument. So you're pumping air in and out to get the sound. Now. The, that's multitasking in, in an extreme. So my mom played piano. She played. There was always the radio on. There was always um, we had vinyls were, were what we listened to in those days. We called them records. There was always music come in our ears. So my brother, um, he he got into music and um, picked up guitar. He's he's a little bit older than what I am, and then. Uh, well, he, he discovered it while he was still at school. I only really got serious about the music when I, when I was just out of school. So in high school, somebody came up to my brother when he was, he was a senior and I was a junior and said, look, do you want a guitar? And my brother was like, sure. He said, you play guitar, do you want a guitar? He says, well, it's in pieces, it's stuffed. We threw it in that dustbin over there. Yeah. So we got scraped out of the dustbin. My dad, who's always had, um, he said, like, uh, create a craftsman's hands. He put it back together, mm-hmm. and that's the guitar that, that, that I, I, I then inherited. So my first guitar was scraped out of a school dustbin, believe sure. it or not. And it really wasn't the easiest instrument to play. So it sat in the corner of the room for quite a while. and was only pretty much until I was out of school that I really picked it up seriously and started to play this beast. Yeah. And uh, I then the bug bit, and I really, really, really got into it. And uh, just naturally flowed with the music because it was just been in my house all the time. And so my brother's been a full-time musician for even longer than me. I've been a full-time musician for, 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 for 30 years. And music is just, it's a beautiful um, medium. I mean, it's, they say it's a, it's a universal uh, language. Um, I believe music is, is a frequency that can heal. Yeah. And, um, and it can really, I, I use the music in my inspiration to because uh, I am it, because it, it just leverages your attention, retention, and recall, and it's a very powerful thing. Because if you hear a song, you always takes you back to another memory. Yeah. So yeah. I thought, how can I use that to teach um, uh, success strategy? You know, yeah, mm-hmm. or prosperity therapy, as, as, yes. I, as I like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now that is very much interesting about your story of how you had to use a guitar that was in the garbage bin. Now, can you please tell us? What type of music do you make? Since you, you at the, earlier on you spoke that you don't make commercial music because the music that you make is more meaningful and inspirational. So c- can you tell us more on that? All right. Um, my mom introduced us to, to a lot of mo- genres in music. So I mean, I, if I had to choose specifically one that I grew up with, I would say it would be folk, mm. folk music. But I mean, we, there was classical, there was... Um, there was uh, rock and roll, um, rock, um, country. Um, uh, so I've, I've never really been too fussy with various music genres. I mean, it just just uh, we've music is something that resonates. So obviously, I have personal tastes, but I would say that um, yeah, I grew up with the the. The, to answer your question, how did it affect my songwriting, is um, once I've learned to play an instrument, then you actually start to study it, and you start to pick it up, and you start to get to know it. And you, introduce, it you introduce yourself to it, and it introduces itself to you. There were certain so- songs that I didn't find myself liking mm-hmm. that now after learning, learning them, and on the, I now love them. <laughs> so I think you, your, your taste and your... your Spectrum just just grows when when you discover more on something. Yeah. So yeah. there's there's no genres that I think I would ever cut out. Mm-hmm. If I had to judge music in any way, shape, or form, it would be, I don't care how slow, sad, um, melancholic it is, um, so long as there's a melody to it, and I don't care how 
how in your face and angry and, you know, and pissed off it might be, so long as there's a melody to it. The other criteria is, is I love to weave with words. Yeah. So if there's lyrical content, does it tell a story? Is there some meaning? Obviously, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relate to that. And that's flowed through in my songwriting. So I've written multi-genre. I mean, I've written songs that are just... Uh, a, a instrumental where it's four guitar parts that actually just build on each other until there's, until there's this, this big production. Mm. There's been songs that are, you could say, that are folk, mm. that have been um, there's um, old school rock, new school rock, um, a country, I also play harmonica as well, blues, um, uh, r and B. I I love Johnny Clegg's mu music. Yeah. So Johnny Clegg, uh, when he was with uh, Jaluka and Savuka. And uh, I even wrote a song uh, to pay tribute to, to Johnny Clegg's style of music. Oh, wow. and, and, and the lyrics just brought it out of another child born to Africa. Mm. And that, so it actually just lent itself to paying tribute to Nelson Mandela yes. and his legacy, as well as Johnny Clegg's music and his legacy. And it's very much in that, in that genre. I think they call it Mascati, uh, is the, the genre of music. The, uh, do you mean Mascandi? I forgive my pronunciation, you know. <laughs> um, I do my best. It's on my YouTube channel. It is there. And I got the... The a, a magnificent choir called the Duduza Serenades, okay. um, to come and do the back the backing vocals, and they mm -hmm. are they just they just knocked it right out of the park. Whenever I perform the song with with the backing track, and they get their their parts with them singing, I get covered in goosebumps. Not because it's my song or, or my voice or anything. It's just yeah. their parts are just that you get that big chorus and that flow. That is that. That's just this, the celebration of music, you know, and it's an addiction. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, can you give us your final remarks, um, especially speaking to the viewers now yes. about finding their inspiration, right? Because this channel is about inspiring and educating people, right? So can you tell them how you would say they should go about finding their life's purpose and so forth? Absolutely, I can do that. Um, we did touch on earlier, it's about, remember I said about finding, it, getting in touch with your authentic self? Yeah. Okay, finding out what really makes you tick. The other one I would say that a lot of us, I would say the, the biggest block to humanity at the moment is our worthiness. Yeah. Really, it's our worthiness. From day one, we have this feeling that we have to prove ourselves and that we're not enough. Yeah. Um, and um, I even have... A lot of affirmations um, on my YouTube channel, the Success Loops Instrumental Inspiration YouTube channel, where there's free content there. And a lot of it is worthiness. And I got very inspired just to build worth. Because, like I said earlier, if our creation was super consciously conspired, yeah. there's no fault there. We don't actually have to prove ourselves. Because there is divine genius that went into creating you, creating me, creating even old Mo behind the camera that he's working so hard <laughs> yeah. uh, behind, behind the scenes. If we could get, because what we believe is what we create. There's the effect called the placebo effect. Yeah. And the placebo effect, if those of you who don't know what the placebo effect is, is if you get prescribed a pill and you believe that this pill is going to cause, a, cause a, an effect in, in, your, in, your, in your body, even if that pull is just a salt or, or a sugar or, even, or an injection that's just a saline solution. Yeah. If you believe it vehemently, this, this body of yours is so incredible that it actually creates by itself the chemistry that it believes it's getting. Sure. Instant manifestation right yeah. there. So we're trying to tap into how, how we can, how can we tap our change? Because we all want desire change. We haven't really had the desire change for the last couple of years, have we? <laughs> Which we've all had to roll with. Yeah. But um, I think, so for me it is, if we can get the belief that we are worthy, mm. and that is a good place to start, that we are worthy, because we were created whole, complete, and enough. Yes. And there's nothing you need to do to have to prove that to anyone. All you've got to do is just to get to know yourself, where your passions lie, what are your priorities, what are your values, mm. and, um, and get in touch with those. Yes, no, they must, they must. Now we can talk about this all day as I can see very tomorrow. passionate. <laughs> now I hope you guys have enjoyed. We've gotten to the exciting part of this interview where Brad is going to be playing an amazing song for us. So <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and give us a like.
Okay, can I pick it up and go? All right, let's do this. So this song I wrote, um, it was on, it's on my second album. Yeah. So Cunning Brad, there is a Cunning Brad channel as well, uh, which, which has cover songs as well as my, my original songs as well. This song I wrote for, on my second album, I think it's actually the, the opening, the first, first track of the album. So uh, and it's, even then, it was all about inspiration, finding success, <laughs> as, per, as per usual. Yeah. So, um, and the song is entitled, Friends of Mine. Katie, you're a friend of mine, welcome to the Cunning Brad Hall of Friendship. <laughs> and this is friend, friend, Friends of Mine. And it's about embracing fame and fortune as friends of mine. Feel free to grab those shakers, Katie. <laughs> Thinking about making dollars, not dimes. Gotta remind myself about the plus sign. Lord knows it divided my mind, subtracted all of my precious time. Centurion TV. Well, I found myself some peace of mind to silence my conscience and quieten my mind. Whatever I seek, I shall surely find. It's fame and fortune, not friends of mine. Friends of mine. Friends of mine. It was lovely to have Brad on the show and if you do want to see more of him you can go and follow along on his YouTube channels. His music YouTube channel is called is under Cunning Brad so you can go and see what he's up to in the music scene and if you do want to know more about his inspirational speaking and how to work with him you can go and follow him along on YouTube under Success Loops, that's his YouTube channel, and also on Instagram for his inspirational work and how to work with him. So thank you once again for Brad for being on the show. It was really lovely to have him here. Uh, we have some very interesting guests coming in the next week. Tomorrow we are going to be talking to Caitlin Bower about her sports climbing journey and how she got into wall climbing. So be sure to hit the bell and um, turn on the notifications for our channel to not miss any of this week's episodes. And then I also want to remind you that Jade van Heistien, who was on our channel last week, her very first single came out yesterday. So go and stream it on all platforms. The song's name is VACS. Go and stream it, share it with your friends, let's support her as much as we can. And if you haven't watched her video, go and watch that. She talked a little bit about what her song's about and what inspired it. So go and 
head to our channel to go and check that out. So thank you for everyone for watching the channel today and for everyone subscribing. Please do share it with all your friends, all your family, like the videos, become a community here on We Are Centurion TV as it does really help us out quite a lot. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of the episodes. And please remember that this is your channel as the community. So if there's anything that you would like to talk about or if you would like to come onto the show and share a little bit about what you do, please email us at stories at wearecenturion.co.za. You can also follow us on all of our social media platforms under We Are Centurion TV. And you can send us a DM on Instagram, message us on Facebook. We are also on TikTok, so have a look on there. Please message us if you want to be part of this community and email us. The email, once again, is stories at wearecenturion.co.za. So thank you once again for being here on our live show today. We will be going live every weekday at 8 in the morning with lovely guests that are in the community. We are here to inspire, educate, and entertain the community. And once again, if you want to be a part of this journey, if there's something that you want us to talk about, please send us an email at stories at wearecenturion.co.za. It will all be in the description here below. And go follow us and subscribe to our channel as it does really help a lot. So once again, just thank you so much for everyone 